Okay, welcome again to December's Brown Bag Lunch Webinar with Generations Magazine hosted by Financial Benefits Insurance as well as Declutter Hawaii. Today we have Debbie Kim Morikawa with us from Gym Guys. I'm so excited to have her. Wanted to do a few housekeeping. So when, because this is a webinar based, um, you are not able to speak to us and we're not able to see you. However, we would like you to chat with us. So um, there are chat features and a question or Q&A feature that if you hover on the bottom or on the top of your Zoom, you'll be able to find those. Please feel free to ask us any questions or chat with us. You can ask the questions in chat or make a comment in chat um, throughout the webinar. We will get to those questions. Um, as soon as we're finished, uh, Debbie will have some time to answer some questions and we can, you know, chat with you. But um, so another another housekeeping is um, this year. This year is finished, but we have already started scheduling for 2022. And our webinars for 2022 will be January. Will be with FBI about Medicare. February will be with Ilima Lejano, and they're going to talk about the questions or the like. What about senior living? You know what. What will get you off the fence about senior living? So they'll go through a bunch of questions um, and answers, as well as some information about how to start that conversation with mom and dad. Uh, and then March, we will have the Ihara team here um, talking about senior living options. So not only the retirement communities, but also caregiving, um, care homes, and different things you will need as you get older. So, but today we're here with Debbie. Kim Morikawa from Gym Guys, and we're so happy to have her. And thank you so much, Debbie, for being with us. I know it's Christmas time and the holidays, which is probably the best the best time to do this because you know what the biggest um, resolution is in January is to get fit, right? So um, this is a great time to start that process of getting fit. Debbie, you ready? Yes, thank you. Thanks. Okay, Debbie. so. Um, well, just to summarize, we're an in-home personal training and mobile fitness franchise, and I really want to thank Generations Magazine for inviting me to present today. I'm going to be reviewing some basics, um, some fitness basics with you, as well as some things you should know and understand before beginning an exercise program. So I will be offering you some tips in the future in, in, throughout the presentation, but this is primarily to help you make sure that what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis is going to help to keep you as functional as possible as you get older. So the techniques I'll be covering apply to exercise as well as any activity you might be doing throughout the day. I want you to become more aware of your own posture and movement mechanics so you can begin the process of creating new and better postural habits. It's kind of funny, um, every time I start talking about posture, it never fails that people will start to sit up a little straighter. But aside from sitting or standing straighter, most of us really don't do much to try to improve our posture. My goal is for everyone to understand the importance of good posture and body mechanics to help you feel better, look better, and function better. Good posture is not just about aesthetics. Without it, your spine can start to shift. There's uneven pressure placed on your joints. And before you know it, you're experiencing both soft tissue changes as well as sometimes permanent damage to your joints and spine. Oh, sorry, went backwards. Okay, so we often think of athletes as people who are in great shape, but the reality is that they put a lot of stresses and strains on their body that aren't good for them. The exercises they do allow them to excel in their sport, but they can also cause permanent damage. This damage is not only due to the high risk of their sport, but the repetitive stresses and strains of training for their sport can also cause significant damage. So if you look at these pictures, you can see how their bodies are often twisted and in extreme positions, placing tremendous stress on their joints and spine. Many athletes suffer the consequences of having to train to perform these movements at the, expenses, at the expense of their bodies. Eventually, those stresses and strains can catch up to them when they get older, when it's too late to reverse the damage. For most people, exercise should be about fitness. We want to train your body to be able to function well so you can feel better. 
Not to get all doom and gloom on you, but if you don't pay attention to the alignment of your body and how your body is moving, just like the athletes, you may not feel anything right now, but as you get older, chronic bad posture can make your muscles have to work harder to take the pressure off your joints, placing abnormal stresses on your body. <clears throat> These stresses can risk the developing the, uh, the worsening of osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease. Whether it's a knee joint or in your spine, these changes can affect the ability to function and ultimately, ultimately impair your mobility and independence. We often hear about older adults complaining of knee pain when they try to stand. Others start to develop a dowager's hump or what we call an excessive kyphosis <clears throat> or rounding of the upper back. Sorry, trying to get out of here. Okay. So one common problem that contributes to that kyphosis is that forward head posture or tech knit. So basically your head weighs a little more than 10 pounds or slightly more than a bowling ball. Your neck works to support your head all day long. Good neck posture requires that your head and rest directly above your shoulders. But most of us, if you look, your ears aren't usually over your shoulders. It's more like that picture to the right where it starts to shift forward. It, it may not be as bad as this one on the right, but well, you can see from this picture above that with that 10 pounds of weight, as it shifts forward, it ends up being more like 20 pounds. And as it gets more forward, it's like 40 pounds. So those little shifts can make a huge difference. And <clears throat> I'm hoping that I'm making a case for why it is that you should pay attention to keeping yourself aligned. Please remember that you will only reap the benefits of having good posture if it becomes a habit and not just something you do when you think about it. Although thinking about it is a good first step. Um, you need to make it something that you do all the time, that you're aware of all the time. Okay, so getting back to the focus of today's topic, how do you establish the foundation for your fitness routine by making good posture a habit or an automatic response? As I mentioned, the first step is awareness. You need to know what your own postural habits are and if you have any asymmetrical patterns. You can't correct what you don't know is wrong. Very few people have perfect posture, but the key is whether you even know what your posture is, because if you can't recognize it, you can't correct it. When I don't pay attention, I start to revert back to my bad habits. When I'm conscientious, I notice when my body's a little out of alignment and I will consciously try to correct myself. Most of us have developed these bad habits over our lifespan by doing things like spending too much time looking at our smartphones, working at a computer, reading, eating, and even driving. That's why it's so important to identify any deviations you have from neutral before you start an exercise program or you could be reinforcing an asymmetry, which means that you know, if you don't know these postural asymmetries occur and you start exercising, you may be actually pushing yourself further into a deformity, which is gonna cause you problems with balance as well as arthritis as you get older. So take a look at these pictures and you tell me what you see. Can you see the position of what these activities do to your neck? You can see that almost all of these, the ears are in front of the shoulders, which is not a good thing. So learning to address that first step of awareness is where you need to get started. Look in the mirror and make sure that you know where your head is in position to your shoulders. For some people, awareness alone may be enough. You may be able to shift yourself back into position and in good alignment with just knowing and cueing yourself and getting into the position. Others, the deformities may already be there and have caused fixed structural changes where you'll need a little bit more muscle control and flexibility in order to get back into alignment. 
If you're not used to being in these positions, you're gonna get tired and give into gravity and that's okay. The important factor is being able to recognize when this is happening throughout the day while performing your daily activities and then periodically realigning yourself. So I know I'm harping on this over and over, but it really does come down to awareness. You really need to know what your position is and making sure that you know how to get back those neutral curves of your spine and realigning your body so that everything is symmetrical. So what is a neutral spine? Okay. If you look at the picture on the back, on the, on the left, I apologize. There we go. That is your ideal posture. You want to make sure that everything is stacked. So you see from the ankles, can you see my pointer here? No? Cynthia, do you know, can, can they see my pointer? Okay, so sorry. You see from, sorry, I was uh, muted. Yep, I can see all that. Okay, pointer. so you see from the ankles, going through the knees, through the hips, all the way up through the ears, it's one straight line. You don't want the neck to be backwards. You don't want the butt to be sticking out or leaning forward. And you want everything to be a straight line from the side. Then from the front, same thing. You don't want any here under the normal spine where you have, some people have a scoliosis, so it may curve out to the side and come back in. Ideally, you want a straight spine. These other positions where you see that kyphosis, so you see that rounding curve in this purple picture, that's where the thoracic vertebra have started to shift forwards because of all of that forward lean. Sometimes people like to lean back. So you kind of shift your weight back and you almost like you're sitting on your legs. That's what we refer to as a sway back. Some people just have a flat back, but it's important that you know what you have so you know how to correct for it. The worst thing is having this imbalanced spine on the right where, you know, some people carry a bag on their shoulder. Some people um, just like to stand on one leg all the time. When you have those kinds of habits, this is what happens. Your skeleton starts to shift and you don't even know it. So this shifted position feels normal because I guarantee you when I ask people and put them into a normal alignment where they're straightened out, they'll tell me it feels weird though. And I tell people, if it feels weird, then probably you're in good alignment. If you don't feel anything, then more than likely you're not in a good position. So when we refer to a stacked position, it's being able to draw that straight line from the ankles all the way to the ears. From the front or back view, you wanna make sure that the shoulders are aligned, the hips are aligned, knees and the ankles, they're all parallel to the floor. The knees, you wanna make sure that the knees stay loose we tend to lock our knees a lot. And the reason we do that is because when you lock your knees, you don't have to use any muscles to stand. Um, it's a physical lock, which means that the joints kind of put themselves locked in place. And the bad thing about it is it's like a post. When you're like that, if somebody bumps into you, you can't bend your knees right away because it's locked. And so you're just gonna topple over. So we tell everybody, get out of the habit of locking your knees. So when you first stand up and go ahead and just stand up and just see what happens to your knees. Do you feel like you kind of almost lock your knees when you're standing and to get them to loosen up, you have to kind of bend them slightly. Then when you start to bend them, you kind of feel like those muscles in your thighs have to work to keep them bent. The good thing about that is by keeping them loose and slightly bent, you're working those muscles. Otherwise, we have the false perception that when you're standing, you're exercising. But if your knees are locked, you really aren't. So make sure that your knees are loose. Okay, I put the foot in there last, but actually the foot should be first. Um, it's really important. You see this picture at the bottom with the bottom of the foot and the three points. The feet are the foundation of our stance. And if you don't have a good foundation, your posture and balance is gonna be off. If you're misaligned at the ankle and feet, everything above is gonna to start to compensate and you're gonna to start to develop those asymmetries. You want your weight to be distributed over those three points in your feet. So I want everybody to stand up, see those three points. I want you to see if you can feel those three points on both your feet as you're standing. As you're standing, 
I want you to make sure that your knees are loose. So now you're going, engaging those quad muscles, the legs, the, the leg muscles, and feel those three points. So I know you, I can't hear you, but I'm assuming you're in that position now. It's really important to do this because if you don't, you're not gonna be able to create that awareness that's so critical to getting your body into the right alignment. Now try shifting your weight. So try leaning forward and feel that weight shifted to the front of your feet. Now try to shift backwards and feel the weight shifted to your heels. And this is important because we're gonna ask you to shift your weight back when I teach you a functional squat. So shift your weight backwards. I want to keep your, keep your body straight, but just slowly shift your weight backwards till you're on your heels. Now try to lean over to the side. So if you see this picture up here, which says supination inversion, um, typically that's what happens to your foot when you start to lean over to the side. Your foot goes into an inversion. And then when you lean to the other side, that same foot goes into an eversion on this outer picture. When you're standing straight, you're gonna be in this perpendicular position, ideally if you haven't already created those shifts. So you wanna be able to find that neutral for yourself because being grounded and having that weight equally distributed through those three points is what's going to be the basis of your balance. The next important um, function that we often overlook is ankle mobility. Do you have enough dorsiflexion? Dorsiflexion is where your toes can up, come up off the ground. So if your foot is flat on the ground, can you lift your toes off the ground while keeping your heel down? Another way to test it is stand with your foot about two inches away from the wall. And you see here this red arrow, you have two inches, your big toe is about two inches away. Then you want to touch your knee to the wall. If this is difficult, so this area in your ankle, if this feels really tight and you really have to push to get that knee there, that means that you're starting to lose a little bit of dorsiflexion. Dorsiflexion is really important because when you walk, you need those toes to come up to clear the ground so you don't stub over your toes as you're walking. The good thing about this test is it's also a good stretching exercise. So if it is tight, then move your foot a little bit farther from the wall and then push again, keeping your foot flat on the ground to try to touch your knee to the wall. Okay, next let's look at shoulder alignment. Okay, to know whether your shoulders are in neutral or are too internally rotated, stand in front of the mirror and look at yourself. Look at the position of your hands. So you see in this yellow square, what you're seeing is you're seeing the side of the thumb and the side of the second finger, the index finger, right? This is a good neutral. Most of us do not stand like that. Most of us are like in this A where you're seeing parts of the backs of the hands, right? That means that our shoulder is slightly internally rotated. So now you're seeing more of the front of the hand. In this other picture from B, it's not as bad because um, you see only part of the backs of the hands. But I guarantee you, if you stand in front of a mirror and look at yourself, just relax, most people are gonna see the backs of their hands because most of us have a certain amount of internal rotation. So the goal is to get those thumbs pointing out. Now, looking at these pictures, can you see some other um, kind of asymmetries? So if you look where her arm is and you look where her body is, you see this little space right in here. That's an indication that she's probably leaning over to her left side a little bit. And that's why her arm is kind of away from her body, which means that she's kind of shifted over to her left. And you can kind of see that her right hip is a little bit up. These are minor things, but if you're not aware of it and you keep going through life, feeding into these asymmetries after a period of time, your bones and joints are going to start to shift and you can create permanent deformities that we're ma making those alignments more permanent, difficult to change. So again, we refer to as um, the anatomical position where we get your hands with your palms facing forward to get your shoulders into the right position. So while you're standing, in order to get your shoulders into neutral, I want you to turn your palms out with your thumbs facing out to the side. Okay? You can, if you turn them all the way, you can kind of feel your shoulders pulling back, right? At the shoulders in order to really get it out to the maximal 
At the very end, your shoulders are coming back and your chest is coming out. I want you to keep your shoulders down though. I don't want you to, to lift them up. So what you want to avoid is the common mistake of pulling your shoulder blades together. So you see how the arrows are coming in and you create that crease in the middle. This is being done by the rhomboid muscle. So a lot of times in order for people to get their shoulders back, this is what they do. But this is not what you want to be doing. Because if you look at the rhomboids, they're not even connected to the shoulder. So if it's not connected to the shoulder, how is it getting your shoulder to actually rotate out, which is done by the rotator cuff muscles? So instead, you want to be able to use the bottom of the traps here. And you want to first push your shoulders down. And then at the bottom here, these tips, you can see it in this picture. You push those shoulders down, which is called scapular depression. Then you want to rotate the scapula, the tips of the scapula inwards. So it's down and back. That's the position that you want to use to bring your shoulders into alignment. And then you want to make sure that your thumbs are pointing out to the side. So that again, helps to hold that position. So you go down and back, point your thumbs out to the side and then let your hands just drop so that the hand then becomes like this square circle where the arms are dropped, the shoulders are back, but the hands are now forward. Now, it could be that when you do that, the arm is gonna be a little bit away from the body because now that the shoulder's back, it does pull your arms slightly forward, but that's okay. I'm hoping this makes sense to all of you. I know that there's a lot. So to review, the key components to good posture is finding your stack neutral. You're gonna start at your feet, find those three points and make sure you have a good solid base of support that it's evenly um, weighted on those three points on both legs. You're not standing more on the right leg or the left leg, you're standing on both. That you're standing, with your ankles positioned in neutral so that again, um, it's even. You wanna then start moving up, make sure that your knees are not locked and that the knee is pointing over the second toe. So you don't want the knee to be pointing outwards or inwards, the knee should be directly in line with that second toe. Then you go up to your hips, you wanna make sure that your hips are level, that you're not kind of, Sometimes, you know how you kind of shift your weight and your hip kind of sticks up to the side, up in the air. You want to make sure that your hips are level. And you can only do this by going into a mirror and watching yourself. And then you want to make sure that your shoulders are level and that your neck is upright. From the side, you want to make sure that your ears are over your shoulders, over your hips, over your knees, and your ankles. Okay, now. The best way to do this in front of the mirror is stand in front of the mirror before you take a shower so you can see those joints really clearly. Get yourself aligned. Feel what it's like to be in that neutral of having to rotate your shoulders back, getting your hips. So if, and if you have one shoulder that's higher than the other, I tell people, make sure that you push down your shoulder instead of like sometimes what people will do is they'll lift up their shoulder, but you want to actually put down your shoulder. So push that shoulder down. The hip, if one is high, again, just rotate a little to get that hip even. Check your back to make sure you don't have an excessive curve in your back or your back's not too flat. You want just a nice slight curve in the low back, a slight rounded curve in your upper back and a slight inward curve in the neck region. Your head should be straight. And in order to get to that position, you wanna be looking straight ahead and tucking your chin back. Now, when you look at yourself, if you now see yourself as straight, you're gonna say, okay, but this feels really weird. What I want you to do is I want you to memorize that weird feeling. Now shut your eyes and stomp around, move around. Before you open your eyes, I want you to get back into that position. Now open your eyes and see where you're at. If now your shoulder came back up or you started to lean over to the side or you started to arch your back a little bit too much or maybe you rounded your, your, your upper back, whatever it is that you have to correct, remember that you've got to do an extra step to correct that before you open your eyes. So reposition yourself, get back into neutral, close your eyes, 
move yourself around and get back into neutral and focus a little more on those areas that you missed the first time. Keep doing that until whenever you open your eyes, you're straight. Because if you can't get yourself straight while you have all those cues, you know that throughout the day, you're not gonna be able to keep yourself straight. So one of the things that I've found, which um, I'm really happy about is, I gave you a lot of information to get into neutral and I gave it to all of you in so much detail so that you would understand what all of those things are. But now what I want you to do is, I want you to learn what um, I found on a YouTube video uh, called Decompression Breathing. It's under foundation training. Um, that's the website down below for the YouTube video. But if you just Google foundation training, decompression breathing tutorial, you're gonna find this video. What <clears throat> decompression breathing does is assists with spinal alignment, improving your posture, and it strengthens your core muscles. All of those muscles listed are the muscles that are used in order to maintain that posture. If you look at Jesse on that side, he's standing there without a shirt. You can see that he's in a very erect position. To hold that position takes a lot of strength and endurance. It's not easy to do, but if you keep practicing this, you're going to be in better alignment and have better endurance to maintain your posture throughout. Okay, so, I want everyone, and hopefully you're gonna be able to hear the sound of this. I want you to all stand up and follow this video um, with me, okay? So let's see if we can- We'll it. start with the thumbs at the base of the rib cage. And when I say base of the rib cage, it's right when the ribs become the belly. So I just wanna check, can you guys hear the video? Cynthia? Yep. Okay, good. We'll start with the thumbs at the base of the rib cage. And when I say base of the rib cage, it's right when the ribs become the belly, right when that shelf occurs. The pinkies are gonna go right to the front of the hip bone there, the ASIS, the anterior superior iliac Everyone spine or the pointy it. bone you can feel at the ridge of your pelvis. That's a little shock sign, like you're in Hawaii. That's your measuring stick. The basis of this is that A, you inhale up in 360 degrees, lifting the whole rib cage away from the pelvis. So you'll see the space change as Jesse inhales. Okay, so you see in this position, his shoulders are down and back. His knees, even though it doesn't look like it, they are loose. His feet are shoulder distance apart. The basis of this is that A, you inhale up in 360 degrees, lifting the whole rib cage away from the pelvis. So you'll see the space change as Jesse inhales. What's more important about this measuring stick though is the exhale. While you feel all of this big expansive lung volume enhancing rib cage expansion, it's the exhale that maintains that expansion that is truly the trainer of decompression breathing. So let's think about that for a moment. You're inhaling into the chest, but you're also really deeply inhaling into the back of the ribs. The larger portion of the lung is kind of backward facing in the rib and can expand quite a bit posteriorly. And as you exhale, you're keeping the abdomen long and you're sort of pulling the belly in off your waistband as you push air out. Okay, so this is a little counterintuitive for anybody who has learned diaphragmatic or abdominal breathing. In abdominal breathing, they tell you basically to push out through your abdomen. And what it's doing is it's trying to create more space in your visceral cavity by pulling the diaphragm down. This works it from the opposite direction. It's expanding your chest to be able to allow more space for your visceral organs from, from by pulling upwards and out. Okay, so again, I hope everyone is practicing this because it does take a little bit to be able to learn um, how to do this. So we're gonna go through it one more time. So let's do that again. Inhale, massive massive, big as you can comfortably into the ribs. Push the ribs out of the way, posteriorly, laterally, anteriorly. That means back, sides, and front. Push them out of the way, and as you exhale, keep them pushed out of the way. This is hard. This is the challenge of decompression breathing. It's not just expansion. It's the maintenance of expansion. It should feel like the belly is almost pulling off your waistband 
as you exhale. From there, chin back, chest up is a cue you're going to hear us give a lot throughout these programs. The base of the skull is going to lift away from the neck. Right where the head and neck join, you're going to lift that up really far. You're going to feel these front neck muscles, the sternocleidomastoid muscles, leveraging the sternum and clavicles upwards as you inhale. That's one of the ways that you know that you're doing this right. The base of the skull pulling up allows the sternum to be lifted towards it. Okay, so you should practice this decompression breathing several times a day. When you do it, you're going to feel your spine straighten out. Sometimes, you know, for those of you who may have kind of um, uh, laxity in your spine, you'll actually feel your spine pop back into place. Um, but if you practice this several times a day, you will automatically go into a better posture. You can do this while you're sitting. Just go ahead and sit up tall, shoulders down and back, taking the deep breath, elongate your, um, you know, that space between your hip and that lower rib, and then take in those deep, expansive breaths, pulling your belly button towards your spine. Do take two or three several breaths. And this will help to get you aligned. I recommend that if you're sitting at a computer desk or um, you know, you're even sitting at a meal every once in a while, just kind of doing a decompression breathing. Practice it. Um, make sure though that you keep your shoulders down and back. Okay. In this next session, I wanna go over some simple exercises you can do around your home to improve your strength, flexibility, and balance. You now know what the basic position your body needs to be when you do these exercises. So you need to make sure that if you have an elevated shoulder or if you tilt your head to the side or if your back's too curved or it's too flat, that you're putting it in that neutral stack position when you start all of these exercises. I'm gonna assume that you'll be able to get into these positions um, and I'm gonna focus more on the technique of these exercises. So the first one is just the sit to stand. In the sit to stand, what we use, we use this um, to teach the proper technique for a functional squat, as well as to teach people how to use leveraging to get up from a low chair or to stand without using your hands to push off. We generally have people start the exercise in standing. You then reach your arms forward with your fingers, um, with your thumbs pointing up. And the reason for this is because as you go back, you're gonna start with the hips in a hip hinge, pushing your butt back as if you're going to sit back in the chair. Most times when people do this, they actually go into a knee bend. So it's like when you say do a squat, they start to bend their knees. You want to avoid this always. What instead what you wanna do is you wanna stand straight and start initiating the movement by pushing your hips back towards the chair right here. You see my knees, my knees are staying behind my toes. My shoulders are over my knees. So that's what's creating the balance so that I'm not falling forward or backwards. In this position, I'm squeezing my butt. When you squeeze your butt, you wanna think about taking all the pressure off your knees. You should not be feeling any pressure in your knees at all. My stomach is pulled in to keep my whole core tight. My ears are in line with my shoulders. So my head's not down or back. It's in neutral, in line with my spine. Okay, so in this next one, I'm gonna just kind of play it. sit to stand. You're gonna start in a standing position. Hands out in front, thumbs facing up. You're gonna always start with your hips first. Push your hips back. Down and come up. So you noticed how my arms came forward, my shoulders were over my legs, and that's what also gives me momentum to go forward so that I don't need to push off. If you were to push off, just um, let's try this. So from here, if I was to just try to stand from here, you'd see my body is going to be behind my knees, right? So if I try to stand, my weight is going to be backwards and I'm going to fall back in the chair. 
I need to actually be leading forward right here so that the weight is over my legs. And that will give me stronger leverage to push myself upright. And as I'm going up, I'm going to be able to stand up straight. So keep in mind, when you do this, you want to make sure that you take all the pressure off your knees. So I want you all to stand up and try it. Okay, so stand in front of your chair. Any position. And... Do a sit to stand. Bring your hands forward. In a okay. standing position. Hands out in front, thumbs facing up. Okay. Now push that, start by pushing that butt back. And always start with your hips first. Push your hips. Go down and in this position here, you're gonna feel the weight shifting over to your heels. Just go down as low as you can while you can still keep your balance, feeling that weight on your heels. Okay, when you get to the point where you feel like you're going to plop into your chair, then you have to bend a little bit more. So you see my body coming forward. Oh, sorry. Do a sit to stand. You're going to start. So you're going to see position. my body come forward as I go Hands further down front, so that I counterbalance up. the weight that's you're going to always start with your hips first. So the hips go back Push your hips and back. I start leaning even more forward, counterbalance down. that so that I don't fall backwards. And come on, do a sit to stand. Now, the reason that this is um, something we teach a lot is because a lot of older people, especially when they've started to lose their balance, they're afraid of leaning forward. But by practicing this, their bodies get comfortable with leaning forward and realize that they're not gonna fall just by leaning forward. Sure, if they threw themselves forward, they would. But if they just lean forward, get their balance, and then just push up on their legs and stand up, you're gonna have a lot of power and better ability to go from standing with less support. Okay, so in this next slide, what you're seeing is what is referred to as a, a typical body weight squat, where you see that the spine is in neutral, she has her arms forward, but you see that her head and her shoulders are behind her knees. So this is a very tricky move. So lots of times when people say, I can't do a squat, it's because they're trying to do it the way an athlete would do it. We're teaching you a functional squat. And that's where your shoulders are going to be more over your knees and your legs. You're going to be keeping your head in line, using your hips to go into a hip hinge, pushing your butt back, keeping your weight on your heels, keeping your knees behind your toes, squeeze your butt and make sure you keep all that weight off your knees, okay? So again, this is what it looks like. So this is what I want you to do whenever you go to sit down. Learn how to do this functional squat and practice it. So you notice how I'm always initiating with my hips, my arms go forward simultaneously so that my chest can stay over my knees. And that way I have a good center of balance over my feet and I'm not losing my balance. Okay, so sitting is now considered the new smoking. And that's what they keep saying. Um, obviously smoking is extremely hazardous to your health and nowhere near as bad as sitting. But the reason they say that sitting is a health hazard is because sitting actually lowers your metabolism, increases your blood fat and sugar levels, lowers your good cholesterol, increases your risk for back pain. And studies have also found that exercise does not reduce the harm caused by sitting. So people say, well, I exercise. The studies have shown that even if you exercise, you cannot take away from all of the bad things that sitting does. So sitting for 30 minutes or longer is going to start to cause all of these bad effects from occurring. So that's why I taught you that squat so that whenever you go to sit down, at least once every 30 minutes, do three to five squats just to get yourself moving. Okay. Every 30 minutes, it's critical. Okay. So this next exercise that I'm gonna talk about is what we refer to as a farmer's carry. Now the farmer's carry 
is another activity that can be done easily around the house. Almost everyone has a jar of laundry detergent or a jug of laundry detergent. By carrying it in one hand and trying to keep yourself balanced, you're exercising a large number Um, a large number of your core muscles. The reason we want it on one side is because it exercises your obliques. Now I'm only doing it with my right arm, but I suggest that, you know, you put it down, do your stuff. And then again, just pick it up with your other hand as you walk back across the room. So you wanna do it and shift hands as you're doing it. As you notice when I go down, I am using that squat position to go down, right? You see my hips going backwards and you see my chest going over my knees, but my knees aren't going too far forward or at least I'm trying not to get my knees too far forward. You can go pretty far down to the ground in the squat position without having to bend your knees versus if you were to do a knee bend, you'd have to bend quite a bit to get that low. Then you do your walking, try to keep yourself level, and then when you stop, again, hip hinge. So you see how my hips went back, my ears and stayed in line with my shoulders and my knees are trying to stay behind my toes. Okay, balance. Balance is a skill. You have to use it or you'll lose it. The fear of falling or overcautiousness can prevent you from getting up and moving around. With less mobility, there's muscle atrophy and loss of strength and agility. Your body gets more rigid because it's afraid to move. So it doesn't get the practice it needs to learn to regain your balance or respond quickly. That means that you're gonna be at further risk for falls. Believing it's dangerous to move is what really causes the harm when you stop, um, when you stop moving around. It's something that happens to your brain. Basically, your brain starts to tell you, if you move, you're gonna fall. So every time you move, it's shouting out to you, don't fall, don't fall, stop, stop. And those are the signals that create the danger. When you have that danger, then you don't wanna move and you become more afraid of falling and it's like a repetitive cycle. So. The first thing that we try to teach people is practice the single leg stance. You should be able to stand on 20 seconds. If not, there could be an indicator of muscle weakness, decreased bound skills or brain health. It's the brain health that this test was designed for. They found that people who couldn't stand 20 seconds on one leg when they did the scans they all had something going on with their brain or a good number of them had something going on with their brains. But we also know that if you can't stand for 20 seconds. Um, the other danger is that when you walk, you spent 40% of the time on one leg. So you can imagine that if you can't stand for 20 seconds, if you're still walking, every step you take is a risk for a fall. So while some people have a natural foot shuffle when they walk, a lot of older adults who shuffle are usually just trying to keep their feet close to the ground because they're afraid to lift their foot up the ground. If you never have the opportunity to safely challenge your balance skills, you will start to lose them. So learn whether or not your natural foot shuffle, if you have one, is just habit or is your balance impaired. Do that 20 seconds test, stand, and see whether you can support yourself. So I tell people start out by being safe, all right? So you wanna start out with a chair in front of you or with your hands on the counter, hold on to it and go ahead and lift your foot with just your toes. So if you feel like this is dangerous for you, you feel uncomfortable, then just go ahead and start with just your foot. So you see how my toes are staying on the ground, my hands are still touching the chair, so I'm still on the ground, but I'm having to stand on one leg, okay? If you feel like you can handle it, then slowly pick this foot up, still holding on to the chair. So get this foot off the ground. And sorry, I don't have a picture of this. And then if you can pick it up off the ground, 
then take your hands off, but keep them over the chair. Now you see me losing balance right at the end. That's a good thing, okay? Because what you want is you want to be able to lose your balance. If you don't lose your balance, your body forgets how to compensate for it. So, you know, it's like when you start to lose your balance, how you jiggle all over, your, all over the place, your body goes right, left, forward, back. You're trying to maintain it. All those muscles are being exercised and are learning what direction to go to keep you centered. But you want to do that in a controlled environment. So, so again, start with your foot up and then try to lift it up. And then try to hold it for those 20 seconds. Your goal is to eventually be able to go to 30 seconds. Okay, the progressions. Once you're able to feel like you can actually lift your foot up, you wanna hold on with maybe just one hand. You know, so if you're standing for 30 seconds, holding on, that's good. Now that you know that you can stand on one leg for 30 seconds, holding on, you know you have the strength. It's just a balance problem. Now try holding on with one hand and seeing whether or not you can still maintain that. Now try closing your eyes and seeing what it feels like with your eyes closed. When you close your eyes, that takes away some of the input and starts to make people feel a little more unstable. Once you've accomplished that, you can lift your foot up higher off the ground. The goal is for you to eventually be able to stand on one leg without support for 30 seconds. So you just, Try doing this progressively, but always stay safe. And don't worry if you lose your balance. If you start to, you know, it's like, I can't do this. You know, you're, you're kind of shifting back and forth. That's a good thing. Think of it as exercising those balance muscles. You got to exercise and you got to use them so they know what to do in case you do lose your balance and you don't have that support. Okay. I, I like to introduce the activator poles just because this is something that we use a lot in our training program. Activator poles are special walking sticks that have the bell bottom. So they're really designed to give you more support on the ground as opposed to just kind of those narrow spokes or tips or boots that don't have that stability. So this is like a, a cane on the bottom. The handle up here, you can see there's this ledge. So instead of having a strap to hold your the walking stick onto your arm, you have this ledge where your hand rests. And the reason why this ledge is so important, I want you to take your hand and place it in kind of a karate chop, like you're gonna karate chop the table, place both hands on the table in front of you and now push down. So get your shoulders down and back like we taught you in the beginning of this program. Now push down, on the table, what do you feel? If your shoulders are pushing down and back, you're feeling your stomach tightening, you're feeling yourself going to an upright position, you're feeling your arms engaged. So what happens is by using that ledge to help support yourself in an upright position, you're actually using more muscles when you walk. So it's not just your legs, you're using your upper body, your core, you're engaging, you're using about, I think they say 40% more energy and muscles when you are using the activator poles. The other thing that's really good about this is that it helps to keep you in an upright position. So if you use these instead of a cane or a walker and you post them, and there's a really good site, it's, um, this is urbanpolling.com. It will show you how to use them as a walker, but just for this single leg stance, you can see now I can get my, my leg up higher. I'm still upright and I'm engaging my core and my upper body in this exercise. So by pushing down, I have stability, but I can now get my legs up. I can alternate. So I'm learning how to shift my weight back and forth. And as I get better, I can just learn to hold it up there and I can count for 20 seconds, or I can count for 30 seconds and then shift legs. So again, this is just a nice tool that um, is available to help. They are kind of all out of them right now. So um, uh, I, I do have the ability to get them if anybody does want them, but 
they were selling them on Amazon and they were selling them on Urban Polling, but apparently they're all out right now. But I did want to show them because we use this in a lot of our training programs. They're good for walking, as you see down here. Oops, let me go back. So you can see, oh, I can't stop it. But it's good for walking. So you get four posts, your two legs, and then the two poles. They're good for exercises, so you can do your squats with them and give yourself a little bit more control. You can do single leg stance exercises with them, so they're very versatile. Another total body exercise that I like people to learn is what I refer to as the modified wall sit. And the modified wall sit, sorry, I'm trying to get to there. Okay, so the modified wall sit exercises your core, your quads, your arms, and it improves your posture. So this is what you do. You wanna start with two water bottles or two cans of soup. You're gonna have a 90 degree bend in your elbows. You're gonna walk yourself forward and slowly stand down. Your knees never come in front of your toes. Push your stomach in, everything goes back. I have a clip so it doesn't work this way that well, but elbows against the wall, chest out, shoulders down and back. And then we're gonna do external rotations. Okay, so what you're seeing is you saw me I'm leaning first with two water bottles or two you can use water soup. bottles or soup can and then you want to get your shoulders into that down and back position leaning against the wall so you always want to start leaning against the wall because that's the safest way and then yeah, what you're going to do is you're going to start walking your, your feet forward walk little forward. by little you want to stop at about 45 degrees so you don't want to go into a 90 90 which is what you know more of the athletes will do in this position the knees stay behind your toes and you don't feel any stress in your knees. If you start to feel stress in your knees, you need to stand up a little bit higher. Don't go down as far. Here, your hips are pushing back and this in your stomach, this is where I was telling you that if you have a really significant curve in your low back, you're gonna wanna push your belly back towards the wall. So you wanna flatten your stomach and hold it back against the wall. If you have a flat back, you don't have a curve there, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to try to arch your back and keep your back arched while you do this exercise. Then through the shoulders, you're going to go into that down and back position. Stand down. So okay. you're going to put your, your shoulders back. Come in front of your toes. Push your stomach in. Everything goes back. And again, I have a clip, so I can't put my head against the wall, but you'd be surprised at how many people have their necks have shifted so far forward that they can't get the backs of their head against the wall. So basically you wanna shift and push that back of the head. You don't wanna look up, you wanna just look straight ahead and tuck your chin so that it's back against the wall. You wanna... Sorry, my thing is frozen. Oh no. Yeah, it's just a blue screen. Oh shucks, I'm gonna have to close it, sorry. Okay, so basically the different types of exercises that you can do, let me... How long do we have? Are we, do we end at 12.30, Cynthia? You have until one. Okay. I'm so sorry about that.
Okay, so the different um, exercises that you can do are the external rotations. So again, that is just keeping your shoulders down and back and going out to the side. You can do bicep curls. So two types of bicep curls. You can have your thumbs up. And I like alternating curls because it exercises your core in a different way. You get more of the obliques when you do it with one side at a time. Or the typical, and this is exercising more of your forearms. Then if you wanna to go to a regular bicep curl where your palms are facing up, this is truly getting more of your bicep. Okay, so the reason I call this a total body exercise is because in that wall sit position, you're strengthening your quads, your legs, Hopefully your feet are in that three prong, those three dots are equally spaced and weighted. Your shoulders are down and back. You're exercising your arms. So you're getting every part of your body moving. The other one is the overhead press. So we rarely reach over our heads, but this one, what I like people to do is I want your thumbs to be facing forward when you first lift them up. So you go into a bicep curl and then push straight up. And the reason for this is it helps to clear your shoulders so that it gives space for that shoulder movement. So nothing gets in pain. Okay, so just as a basic review, good posture needs to be a habit. You, we covered a lot of things, but the key things that I want you to walk away with are how important posture and body mechanics are in your everyday life. Sitting is a hazard to your health and regular exercise doesn't mitigate the risk factors if you sit for longer than 30 minutes at a time. You also need to challenge yourself to move more quickly in a safe manner. So your balance and reaction time are skills that you need to use or you will lose it. Remember, if you're lacking flexibility in any of these areas, achieving good posture and your ability to have good movement will be more challenging. So you wanna be able to assess, are you stiff in certain areas and you wanna get onto a program to, to be able to stretch those areas out safely without damaging any of your joints. Your ankle needs to have sufficient dorsiflexion so that when you're walking, you can pick your feet up off the ground safely. Hip flexors and hip extensors tend to get tight because we sit so much, the hip flexors get tight, the hip extensors, those are our glute muscles, they get overstretched. And so they're either tight or overstretched, but essentially it means that they're weak. As we, don't get, as we get older, we don't, you raise our arms up over our heads so often, we can lose our range of motion. So you remember how we were doing that overhead press? Well, that's important because putting on a sweater, all the internal external rotation, putting on a jacket, reaching for something in a, um, a cupboard, all of those things require good shoulder movements. So all of the exercises that I presented today are good things to be able to maintain the movement you need for everyday living. Also remember that the types of activities we do throughout the day, like driving, eating, using our smartphones, reading, um, all those activities tend to put our shoulders in a rounded position and our heads forward. So be aware of how often you're in those positions and practice the decompression breathing. When you feel yourself sitting over, just go ahead and straighten out, shoulders down and back, taking a deep breath, fill up your rib cage, chest out, chin back, taking a couple of deep breaths, pull that stomach in towards your spine. That's your decompression breathing. Do that a couple of times and that will help to get you back into alignment. Now to hold that position there as long as you can is ideal, but we know you're gonna get tired. So that just means that you've gotta build up your endurance so that you can hold that position for longer and longer. Okay, so. Remember, if you're lacking flexibility, make sure that you are looking at these areas specifically. We talked about the ankle dorsiflexion, the hip flexors, 
hip extensors. Other common areas, you lose shoulder flexion, internal rotation, your core gets weak. You also get weak back muscles. So the reason why people tend to slouch forward a lot is because their back muscles are weak. Without a strong core, which includes both the front and back of the muscles, doing things like pulse or yard work or even sitting becomes a little more difficult. You tend to slouch more. And that's again, where all of those compensatory patterns are gonna cause deformities or changes in your spine. So just remember, always be able to find your ideal neutral posture. If you have to practice, go in front of a mirror, practice that every day until you can recognize and get yourself into neutral without having to use that mirror. Throughout the day, make sure that you pay attention to when you feel like, oh, you know what, I can kind of feel myself leaning or I can feel my shoulder coming up. Sometimes your shoulder comes up because you use a mouse during the day or because you carry a bag on that shoulder, or maybe that's the mug that you use to drink your coffee from. And so your shoulder automatically comes up. Remember, it doesn't need to come up. You can use that movement with just your elbow. So make sure that your shoulders always stay down and back and that you try to keep them rotated out by pointing your thumbs out and then dropping your elbows and hands. Practice the decompression breathing and move every 30 minutes. So I know I covered a lot. I was kind of repetitive for a lot of things, but I just wanted to make sure that you would, it's really hard in a webinar. It's much more fun to be able to talk to people in person. And, um, but at least I was hoping that I would be able to cover all of the things that will help you at home that you can do very simply if you follow it. If you have any questions about anything that I've covered, you're not sure, um, I, I think I can create handouts and, and provide them to Cynthia so that if this is my email address, if you want a handout, just email me and I can give you, um, a, send you a PDF of the handouts of some of the pictures that I did, not the videos, but the pictures, and, but the, they'll have the links to it. And I can actually put the links into the email so you can see that decompression breathing. But essentially, you have a lot of the tools now to be able to maintain the key movements that you need to keep yourself healthy and fit if you practice them. So just practice them several times throughout the day and you should be good. Now, if you wanna get better, then there are things that you can do to help up the progression to a more um, a vigorous activity. And I can help you with those things as well. If you give me a call, you know, I'd be more than happy to tell you other things that you can do to try to make um, these exercises a little more challenging. Okay, Cynthia, were there any questions in the chat? Yes, um, it says, since we are now spending so much time in front of our computers, um, I hope you will touch base, um, hope you will touch upon sitting postures too. You know, <laughs> when you started and you're talking, I was like, oh my God, I did the same thing. I like sit up straight and I was like, oh yeah, I, I, I do slouch and <laughs> yeah. But isn't that funny that as soon as someone points it out to you, you notice it, right? And the more that you start to notice it, the more that it's going to come natural. Meaning that when you start to slouch because someone's pointed out, you're going to realize, oh, I got to sit up, try that decompression breathing. So in the sitting posture, sitting is the same as standing. All that we talked about as far as getting your shoulders down and back, mm -hmm. being able to pull yourself up like there's a string on the top of your head. You wanna keep your feet planted on the ground. You don't want your legs dangling because that puts too much pressure on the back of your thighs and it can cut off circulation. So you want your feet planted. Look at the position of your feet. You wanna make sure that, again, what we talked about in the standing, that your ankles and toes are in alignment with your knees and your hips. So you don't want your toes pointing out, but your knees coming in or your knee, toes pointing in and your knees caving in. You want everything to be in kind of keep your feet at least about a foot apart, about hip distance and everything going down straight and supported. Your low back, you want to make sure that you've got that natural curve, the neutral curve. You don't want it to be excessively curved and you don't want it to be flat. It flattens out when we slouch. So if you were to just kind of slouch down, you see how your pelvis shifts back and your back flattens out versus 
if you start to straighten up and kind of try to stick your butt out and push your chest out, you recreate that natural curve in your low back. So some people have an excessive curve and if they already have that excessive curve, then they need to kind of pull their stomach in and lessen that curve just slightly. But if you practice that decompression breathing, and the other thing you can do with the decompression breathing um, is, Cynthia, can we put it onto um, where we see both of us so I can show them my hands? Um, you have to unshare. Oh, sorry. Uh, my fault. Okay, so what you wanna do is basically, you wanna take your hands like this, and you put them between your knees. So on the inside, push out against your knees and your knees push into it. So you do that decompression breathing. So you stop, so look straight ahead, shoulders down and back. Remember, you're gonna rotate those shoulders out. So try to pull those thumbs out to the side. Pull yourself up, flatten your stomach or maintain that neutral curve. Push against your knees and then pull yourself up. Remember, chest out, chin back. Now taking a deep, expansive breath <laughs> and hold it up. So you gotta keep holding it up. Don't let it come down. Now you feel how hard it is to keep your chest expanded. Don't let it drop. Now breathe out, keeping everything up by pushing your stomach in. Now taking another deep breath. Now you feel all those muscles working, right? When do you ever use those muscles? Oh, hardly ever. <laughs> right. So you can imagine just sitting and doing this a couple times a day. What you're doing is you're strengthening all those postural muscles to keep your core and your spine in the position that it needs to be in when you do everyday activities to be able to do it safely. So it's a very simple technique to get yourself into alignment. Was that the only question? Uh, yes. Okay, yeah. So, and the other thing that, you know, like when um, I stand, the way I noticed that I was crooked, whenever I took pictures, it's like, how come everybody's standing straight and I'm like standing like this? And it was because I would shift my weight and I didn't know it. So I had to practice and practice. And then I always, you see my right shoulder, how high it is? So I always have to push it down. So if I'm not paying attention and I just let it go, it slowly shifts up and I have to push it back down again. So look at yourself when you're in the mirror and see those things. Learn your idiosyncrasies, your asymmetries, and then just keep practicing it. The more you practice it, the more you send signals to your brain. Same thing goes with the balance. I can't emphasize this enough. We do not challenge our balance enough. So the other thing that I'll do with people, and I didn't have a video for this, but I will tell people to stand sideways and put your hand on the counter, Okay. And then I want them to lean all the way over onto the leg that's closest to the counter and hold themselves up there. Because a lot of times when they're standing straight and they pick their, their so let's say <clears throat> your, left, your left arm is out. You're leaning over trying to get all your weight onto your left leg. Now you try to pick up your right leg. What I find a lot of times is as soon as they try to pick up their right leg, the body goes back over. Oh. So they try to go, but as soon as that right leg comes up, it pulls them over. So getting all the way over to all that weight is over there and then trying to pick up that leg just slightly really helps to get their center. A lot of people have lost the ability to find their center. So when they pick up that one leg, there's their center is off, right? Because their center, as soon as you pick up that one leg, now all of a sudden you're gonna flop to that right side, right? Mm -hmm. Because you, you have to compensate by going over to the left in order to keep your body from going right. People can't do that. So I tell people to just try it. If you have a difficult time getting your foot up and keeping it up, before you pick it up, hold on to something, lean all the way over on that side, and then gradually pick that leg up until you can hold it up in the air and just stay there and count for 10 seconds, staying like that. And if you do that and you keep practicing it, little by little, you're gonna be able to pick that leg up and hold it without falling over. Yeah, I, I tend to stand like a flamingo, but oh. I, 
and I don't lose my balance, but I tend to like stand like that with my leg, like, like a flamingo, basically. Wow. But, yeah. I mean, I, I think I have pretty good balance, but no, I know my part, like for myself, posture is, is what I'm not good at because my back muscles and, you know, the core and stuff. So yeah, I, when you we were doing it, I was like, that's why I turned off my camera. I was like, oh God, this is stupid. <laughs> I don't want people to see me like, oh, oh. But yeah, the, that, that breathing, wow, it really like, it does, you know, touch on a lot of muscles that you really never really use. And yeah, so, oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody else have any questions? Uh, you can always reach Debbie. Um, her video is going to be on generations808.com. So if you want to go back and watch it, you may. Um, also, all of our webinars, past webinars, and radio podcasts are also on the generations808.com um, website. Um, Doug put in the chat the link to where the generations videos are. So if you want to copy that link, you can as well. But Debbie, thank you so much. It was really eye-opening for me. <laughs> um, just knowing, I mean, I sit on a computer most of the day. So, um, you know, making sure I'm, I sit up straight. I actually had my husband build me a stool because I can't, you know, like you said, when you sit down and your legs just dangle, it's not very good. Yeah, so he made me a stool because I can't touch the ground. Um, where I'm sitting at my desk. So yeah, it really helps with learning about posture. So thank you so much for being with us, Debbie. I really appreciate it. It actually- well, Thank um, you for having me. It resonates on a lot of things because I played a lot of sports when I was a kid. And as I'm getting older, I can feel like some little aches and pains like, oh, wow, that didn't hurt like 10 years ago. Or So all these little things like doing the exercises on the walls, actually that's I'm going to start doing that instead of just, you know, doing it freestanding because you are using a lot more muscles when you're, you know, against the wall. So actually that's a good one. So everyone who's watching, you know, these are small things you can do at home to just, you know, have some physical fitness, but also like your posture is really important because a lot of our clients, you know, I can tell they, they are walking, you know, a little bit more hunched over things like that. So the earlier we can start doing these things, the better we'll be when we get older. So yeah. thank you, Debbie, for being oh, with thank us you. today. Okay. Um, I just I just wanted to end with um, thanking FBI um, for their sponsorship as well as Declutter Hawaii. I am Cynthia Arnold. Um, this is actually going to be my last webinar. Maylin Moore will be taking over with Generations uh, Magazine for the webinars as well as other things. So please be on the lookout for an email for January's flyer for um, FBI going to be on doing, talking about webinars. So uh, if there's anything else, you can ask questions. If not, we're going to be signing off for today. So thank you so much, Debbie, again, for being with us for our Brown Bags webinar. And thanks for your patience with my glitches in the beginning. <laughs> not a problem. Take care. Okay. Happy holidays. You guys everyone. have a happy, yes. Happy holidays. <laughs>